What's up? I want to do a new supplement video because when I did one at the beginning of this year, I just had way too much crap and it just seemed like too much. And really it was too much. Supplements really can't supplement clean eating. And that's really what I've learned this last year is no matter what you take, it doesn't matter because food is what's really important. Clean eating trumps supplements more than anything. But I do kind of want to talk about what I am taking now and what I've uh, toned down and what I've condensed it all down to. So everything you can see here is pretty much all that I'm taking. Some of this is really simple stuff that I take all the time. And that's actually what I want to start with. The first thing I'm taking is a multivitamin. Now the multivitamin I take is by Centrum and I got it on Amazon.com. I got it really cheap too. I got, uh, oh geez, I think like four or five months supply for $8, which is a total deal. It's a century of multivitamin and there's a key to this vitamin. What it has in it is it has phytosterols. Now this multivitamin has phytosterols in it and the FDA has actually approved the following claim for phytosterols. It says foods containing at least 650 milligrams per serving of this plant phytosterol eaten twice a day with meals for a daily total intake of 1.3 grams as part of a diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol may reduce the risk of heart disease. It can also supposedly reduce cholesterol and that's why this vitamin is a key part in my diet. But one thing about phytosterols, I search Google and you can pretty much find anything you want. Phytosterols are also known to cause lung, stomach, ovarian, and breast cancer too. Uh, lucky for me though, I don't have any breasts or ovarians, so I'm cool there. Only got to worry about lungs and my stomach and uh, my grammar and vocabulary. So the second supplement that I pretty much take all the time is glucosamine. I love glucosamine. It's meant to kind of lube your joints, lube everything in your body. It's a natural lube. So glucosamine occurs naturally in the body. Uh, it contributes to joint health by, like I said, helping build cartilage in your joints and lubing them up. The suggested dosage is 500 milligrams three times a day for a total of 1,500 milligrams. The glucosamine that I got, I got on bodybuilding.com for about 14 bucks for a month's supply. But at my local Ralph's, I've seen the glucosamine there go on sale where you can get like a two month supply for about 14 bucks. And that's a pretty good deal. So just keep your eyes out. I love this stuff because at my job, I type on a computer and it helps with my wrists. I notice it um, when I'm not taking it. My wrists hurt a lot. And when I am taking it, they don't hurt as much. So for me, it's something I'm taking all the time, regardless if I'm lifting or training for anything. The next supplement I take pretty much year round is omega-3s, or you might know it as fish oil. So I did a little research on fish oil, and let me read to you what I pulled up. Now, the National Institute of Health consulted a group of experts to determine a recommended daily intake of omega-3s derived from fish oil. Now, there's EPA and DHA, and they're classified as omega-3 fatty acids. Now, the results of this were published in an October 99 issue of the Journal of American Colleges of Nutrition. They concluded by endorsing 650 milligrams of combined DHA and EPA for cardiovascular benefits in a ratio of basically 2 to 1 of either D DHA or EPA. Whatever the ratio is, it doesn't matter, but that's the best ratio to take. So when I read this, I thought to myself, well, which one should I take in the 2 to 1 ratio? Should I flip them around? So I did a little more research and I found that uh, a decision to select a supplement according to DHA and EPA content should be, you know, kind of based around what you're looking for. So for example, a certain study I also read about, which I don't have the name of right now, uh, it reported that DHA in high concentrations will help like your retinas and your brain activity. So if you're seeking, you know, vision and neurological benefits, you want a high DHA ratio in that two to one part. On the other side though, EPA plays a major role in reducing levels of triglycerides. So if you're looking to kind of uh, decrease your lipid levels or your cholesterol, you're gonna want a higher level of EPA. So the supplement that I got, it has a two to one ratio higher with the EPA because I'm looking to lower cholesterol and that's kind of my goal on this supplement too. Again, fish oil can be really cheap to find, but try to find them in these ratios with these suggested servings. The, the fish oil I got on, I got on bodybuilding.com, I got 90 soft gels for $12.79, and one soft gel is all I need for my daily recommended dosage, as we just talked about. So that's a 90-day supply for $12.79, and that's kind of a cheap and great deal. The next major supplement I take is protein. I take it before and after a workout, and sometimes I'll supplement protein in my oatmeal, wherever, just to kind of meet my macros for the day. Now, when it comes to working out, you really want to take a protein and carbohydrate mix right after you work out. 
Now there's going to be a lot of discussion and a lot of people have different uh, theories about what the correct ratio is for, for carbs and protein when you finish working out. Some experts believe you know you want four parts of carbs to one part of protein. Some people might say you want two parts carbs to one part protein. You know, we could discuss this all, all night long. You can look up YouTube videos of everybody arguing. I basically go with the two to one ratio. So I go two parts carbs, one part protein. And you want a faster dissolving protein after your workout. So that's why I go with a whey protein, a pure whey protein that doesn't have a lot of ingredients. That's one thing you'll see in protein powder is just a list of tons and tons of ingredients. So I try to go with something that's simple, that has a small amount of ingredients. And the main one I really want is whey because it's fast and it digests fast in your body. For my carbohydrates, I use just simple Gatorade. I mean, it, it's, it's really simple. Again, you can argue on the different type of carbohydrate to take with your protein, but for me, Gatorade works well. I use two scoops. I get about 50 to 60 grams of carbs after my workout, and then my protein powder, I'll get about 30 grams of protein. So it's just that simple for me. The basic key to taking your protein and, and carb supplement is get it in as fast as you can after your workout. There's a they say there's a short window to really optimize that post-recovery drink, but if you do get it in, hopefully it will help you build muscle, lean muscle, help you lose weight, and just kind of help you out in the gym. My last supplement that I have for you guys is kind of like an optional supplement. You don't have to take this. It's not for everybody, but if you're weightlifting in the gym, you probably want to take it, and just about everybody takes it. It's creatine. So creatine is an amino acid that's created in your kidneys, pancreas, and liver, and it's also in various supplement products. Your body stores creatine derivatives called phosphocreatine, I hope I said that right, in your muscles. And then it uses that as a source of energy. So when you perform uh, certain forms of exercise, this phosphocreatine can help your body increase muscle mass and strength. Now when you perform exercises that demand short bursts of high energy muscle output, such as weightlifting, your body converts that photo that phosphocreatine into like an energy source. So that's where you get more energy from creatine. You can lift heavier, you can lift more, and it helps you out. But if you're doing more of like a long distance endurance type of exercise, the creatine is not going to help you out so much. So I'm lifting weights and I'm lifting kind of heavy. I'm not doing so much of endurance training right now. So creatine is something that I definitely use and that helps me out. But again, it's not for everybody. It's kind of just an optional thing out there if you're into weightlifting and you have some more of like a slower type of repetitive exercise instead of the endurance training. So that's pretty much it for my video. I may have sound really well informed, but I just did a basic search on the internet for some of these details. I just did some reputable sites like uh, WebMD, uh, Bodybuilding.com has a lot of good information, although they do sell a lot of this stuff, so it may be one-sided. Uh, I also like Livestrong too. A lot of their information is is really detailed and great, especially their information on steroids. They're right on top of that. That's pretty much it for this video. Like I said before in the beginning, uh, supplements are just supplements. You really need to eat clean, train, and then get some rest. And then supplements kind of come in the back end. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching me conquer myself, and I will see you guys later.